Hey, you guys. Just want to do a little Bible study with you. So if you have your Bibles, grab your Bibles and go to Matthew 20. I was reading this morning in Luke and referenced something in Matthew, and I got to this um, parable in Matthew 20 that Jesus is telling. And I have talked about this parable in other videos recently, but it just is the principle of this parable is resounding in the church right now that be, uh, we need to just be aware of what God is doing and be good with and happy about <laughs> what God is doing um, in his church and the type of people that he's using in his church. So um, in order to like set this up, you have to look at the end of Matthew 19. The end of Matthew 19 is Jesus talking to the rich young ruler and telling him, if you really want to be perfect, but I mean, he was like, can I, how, how can I be saved? You know, I've done all the commandments. I've kept all the commandments since my youth. And still this man was thinking that um, he could earn salvation, basically. And so Jesus said, you know, it doesn't work like that, but you're trying to be perfect. And if you really want to be perfect, you're going to have to sell everything that you have and give it to the poor and then come follow me. And of course, the man went away sad because he had great wealth and he was attached to his wealth, right? Uh, then Jesus went on to talk to the disciples a little bit and... Um, at the end of chapter 19, he says, many who are the greatest now will be least important then. He's talking about the, um, the end times and also living in the kingdom. Many who seem to be the greatest now will be least important then. Those who seem least important now will be the greatest then in the kingdom, in the kingdom of God. And so then he goes on to say, for the kingdom of heaven is like the landowner who went out early one morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay the normal daily wage and sent them out to work. So workers that are going into the vineyard from early in the morning and they are agreed to a certain wage that I'm going to work all day for that wage. At nine o'clock in the morning, he was passing through the marketplace and saw some people standing around doing nothing. So he hired them, telling them he would pay them whatever was right at the end of the day. So they went to work in the vineyard. At noon and again at three o'clock, he did the same thing. At five o'clock at the end of the day, that afternoon, he was in town again and saw some more people standing around. He asked them, why haven't you been working today? They replied, because no one hired us. I'm going to come back to that in just a second. Because no one hired us. The landowner told them, well, then go out and join the others in my vineyard. That evening, he told the foreman to call the workers in and pay them, beginning with the last workers first. Those ones hired at the end of the day at five o'clock. When those hired at five o'clock were paid, each received a full day's wage, a full day's wage. They had no idea when they agreed to work. They had no idea how much they were going to be paid. He just said, I'll pay you whatever's fair. You know, uh, they got a full day's wage when those uh and then when those hired first the ones that he hired early in the morning who had agreed to the wage and said okay i'll work all day for that much uh they assumed they're watching the others and what the others are being paid and they assumed they're going to receive more because they've been working longer but they too were paid one day's wage when they received their pay, they protested to the owner. These people worked only one hour, and yet you've paid them just as much as you paid us, who worked all day in the scorching heat. He answered one of them, friend, I haven't been unfair. Didn't you agree to work all day for the usual wage? Take your money and go. I wanted to pay this last worker the same as you. Is it against the law for me to do what I want with my money? Should you be jealous because I am kind to others? So those who are last now, or least important now, will be first then, and those who are first will be last. Now, these workers who were working in the vineyard represents people working in God's church, and that we all come into salvation with the same reward from God. And no matter how long we've been working in the heat, no matter how long we've been uh, obeying God, and no matter how much suffering we've had to go through for, through many years of serving God faithfully, 
Jesus says, I want to be kind to everyone. Don't be jealous because I am just as kind to the person who just came into the kingdom and they became a leader really quickly and they are, are, are receiving great honor and they're getting the same wages as you. You know, don't be jealous of that. Don't worry about that because um, these are the ones that I choose to use in this season and I want to show them my kindness just as much. You agree to the same benefits that are in my kingdom as the person who, who just came in to the kingdom. And so it doesn't mean that we who've been serving the Lord longer need to hold that over somebody else or say, God, you have to treat me better or I should have more rewards than someone else uh, because I've served you for so long. That's not how the kingdom works. The kingdom is completely opposite of that. It is by grace that you are saved. It is by grace that we live in God's kingdom. It is by grace that we enjoy the benefits of God's presence and his blessings every single day of how he takes care of us and protects us and how he grows us on the inside and then he lets us serve him you know, in the world. And so in every circle of influence, we are serving God and that is a blessing from him. So uh, let's go back a second because he's referencing when he says those who are last now will be first then and those who are first will be last. He's talking about who are those people that were hired at the end of the day? They were the, they seemed like they were last but they received the same wage. They received the same, like more important. They're going to become more important than those who were hired at the beginning of the day and worked for long, long hours, right? It's not about work and it's not about earning anything. It is about the grace of God and the mercy of God. So um, at five o'clock that afternoon, he was in town and saw some more people standing around. He asked them, why haven't you been working today? Why haven't you been working today? And they replied, because no one hired us. Now, I have never really understood why that verse is there and why those two phrases are there in this um, story. I've just sort of kind of been like, okay, weird, but just moved on to the whole point of the story. But this is an important part of the story. This is important uh, to notice that at the end of the day, there were there were more people that had been standing around all day. And he said, why haven't you been working today? Because no one hired us, they said. So these are the ones that have been overlooked. These are the people in God's kingdom that have been overlooked. They have not been noticed. They've been unnoticed. They've been overlooked. They have been um, the ones that maybe seem more insignificant or the ones that seem like, oh, I'm not sure if they're like that strong leader. The church should has to, um, like, because we're human, I think that in the past, uh, the church and leaders in the church have looked at outward appearance, looked at someone's um, personality maybe, or looked at the charisma that somebody has and think and assume, or even the gifts that they have and assume that person's going to be a really great, strong leader. And so we ask them at the beginning of the day to work in God's kingdom, right? But these are the ones at the end of the day, no one had noticed them, they had been overlooked. They had been passed over. They had been, um, they're the ones that are more insignificant on the outside. They are the ones that are unexpected. They are the unknown ones, the ones that don't have the big name ministries or anything like that. These are people who have simply been faithfully serving God, but no one has asked them to be that leader and to work in God's vineyard until now. So now is the time where God is saying, I choose you. I want you, the hidden ones, the unexpected ones, the ones that no one else thought could be great leaders, the ones that didn't seem like they had all these amazing gifts and charisma and personality to be a leader in God's kingdom. God is saying, you, I want you. Go work in my vineyard. And he's saying, you seem less 
um, significant or you seem less important, but you are the ones that are going to become more important than even the ones that were hired long ago or that God said, you know, yeah, let's work in my kingdom for many years. So again, it's going to be the same reward is given to these ones, these young in the Lord, um, leaders that God is raising up that we see, that we see it happening, you know, um, children, young people, uh, people who are, have a powerful testimony, who are just coming into the kingdom, who are coming out of the world and coming out of a um, sinful lifestyle, and they are sold out for Jesus. And Jesus is saying, time is short. This is the last hour of the last days. And I want you to work in my kingdom. And you are going to get the same benefits of my kingdom as those who've been working and, and plowing and doing the hard, hard work for many, many years, even decades. Um, on this earth and in, in the church. So just don't worry when that happens and don't be jealous and don't be um, judgmental about it, but be grateful, be thankful because these are workers in God's vineyard. They're, the harvest is so great and the workers are few. So God is saying, please don't stand around. I don't want anybody standing around. I want everybody, every single person. I don't care who knows you or who don't, doesn't know you. I want every single person working in my vineyard. And, um, he is going to be merciful and good and kind, and we are going to be surprised and delighted that some that are just brand new believers are going to grow so quickly and become leaders and have the uh, Holy Spirit operating in their lives in a powerful way, even more so than those who've been walking with the Lord for a long time. And so let's just celebrate what God is doing and be grateful and thankful for all of the workers in God's vineyard. Doesn't um, it's There's nothing that is being earned <laughs> by the time Time, the amount of time that you've put into serving God. You're not earning more of his blessings and more of his benefits. Uh, you are simply being obedient to him. And he said, let me be kind and merciful. Don't be upset that I'm kind and merciful. Uh, those who are last now will be first then, and those who are first will be last. So the, the ones chosen last, the ones that are unexpected, that didn't seem like they would be the great leaders. God is going to honor those ones in this season. And, um, and, uh, we should also honor them and celebrate them. So anyways, I hope that's a blessing to you guys read Matthew 19 and 20. Uh, it's just a ton of good stuff in there, but, um, where he talks about the, the least important, the, those who are greatest now will be least important then. Who, those who seem least important now will be the greatest then. Just chew on that for a while and just ask God, like, how does that apply to my life? And and uh, what part do, do I have in that? So anyways, Lord, I just pray over that word. I pray, Lord, that um, your word will bear fruit in the hearts and the lives of those who hear it. And Lord, let us all say yes to you and not worry about what anybody else is doing, but say yes to what you're asking us to do, Lord. And uh, that we get to work in your vineyard, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that you would send more, more, more workers, Lord. We don't care if they... They're little children, or we don't care if they, uh, if we overlooked them before, Lord, just send them, send them into your vineyard and send them into your um, harvest fields, Lord. I just thank you, Lord, that harvest is white. It is ready. It is so ripe and so ready, Lord, and there is so big. And so every single person who is willing, who says yes to you, Lord, is going to um, get to bring in your harvest. And I pray, Lord, many, many, many people are saying yes to you in this, in this time, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, take care, you guys.